this is the F-18F or Foxtrot. Um, this is a two-seater F-18. You've got a pilot and a weapon systems officer. Um, this has some special capabilities that the Echo model does not have. Um, namely, the weapon systems officer can operate a targeting pod. If you all come over here underneath the left wing, right near the air intake, you'll see the TGP right on the corner there. Um, looks like a little tube. It's got a camera on the front. Weapon systems officer operates that and can spot laser marks, can actually mark with lasers, and controls most of the weapons delivery while the pilot focuses on flying the aircraft. Um, the other capability that this has is what's called the buddy pod here. Um, you can actually outfit the Foxtrot with um, extra fuel, and this buddy pod will have a refueling drogue come out behind it, and the other F-18s can refuel from it. Um, basically, yeah, that makes sense to everybody? Yes, sir. Cool. All right. Um, weapons on this thing are as follows. We've got the AIM-9X, which is a short-range uh, IR-guided missile. That's for air-to-air -air, uh, only, pretty much. You can technically use it on ground targets. It's not meant for that. Next, on uh, pylon number two, we've got the, uh, the AIM-120. This looks like a Bravo. Uh, yeah. This is the AIM-120 Bravo. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just copping. Um, this is a medium-range radar-guided air-to-air missile. Um, again, not so useful to a JTAC, but now we start getting into the cool stuff. This is the, a next in is the AGM-65. It's painted like a hotel. It acts like the Delta. So it's basically an AGM-65D. It is an IR-guided uh, air-to-ground missile, good for taking out tanks and uh, any sort of armor. It will only lock on to IR signatures including armor, vehicles. Um, I don't think it will actually lock on, in this case, to people or buildings, although in real life you can actually do that. Next in, we've got the AGM-84 Harpoon, which is uh, what's called an anti-ship missile. It is, in this case, it acts almost exactly the same as the AGM-65, However, uh, it has a little bit longer range and a little bit more blast. So it's sort of an upscaled version of the AGM-65. Uh, a lot of times we'll use the 84 for suppression of enemy air defenses uh, because you've got the extra range and blast radius on it. Um, you'll notice both of these are mounted on a double ejector rack or dual rail as it's called here. The double ejector rack allows you to have two munitions uh, on the same weapons pylon. On the next double ejector rack, uh, with the sort of ring near the nose, you've got the GBU-12. This is a laser-guided 500-pound bomb. Um, it can also be a free-fall dumb bomb, but it, the uh, guidance kit on it is for laser-guided. Um, this is what you're going to request if you're marking a target by laser and you actually want to guide the bomb by that laser. It only works with the laser from the laser designator. It will not lock on to the IR uh, pointer on your the side of your gun. Next in, you've got the GBU-38, which is a joint direct attack munition, which means it's GPS guided. It's essentially a guidance kit placed on a Mark 82 500-pound bomb. This is GPS guided. It will not lock onto any ground mark. Uh, it has to be dialed in from the cockpit. Um, I actually, the last time I tested these in Arma, it didn't work correctly. However, previously I, I have seen it work correctly. So um, requires further testing. For now, you can sort of treat it as a Mark 82. Um, and if a JTAC requests a Mark 82 and this is what the pilot has, this is what they're going to drop uh, just in Arma because there's sort of no differentiation here. Um, so that's the go-to for uh, free fall dumb iron bombs. Okay. The other side of this aircraft is outfitted with the exact same stuff, so let's move on to the uh, F-18 Echo. Okay, uh, you'll see here on stations 1 and 2, we've got the AIM-9 and the AIM-120 respectively. Those are the same as before. Um, next in, we've got the GBU-32, which is the 1,000-pound variant of the JDAM from the other 
model. Once again, the GBU-38 on the Foxtrot over here is 500 pounds. GBU-32 is uh, 1,000 pounds. And then one more station in, you've got the GBU-31, which is 2,000 pounds. Uh, we just tested the blast radiuses on these. The 2,000 pounder is quite impressive and will fully take out an unarmored vehicle at easily 70, 70 to 100 meters away, uh, completely destroy the vehicle. Uh, didn't test against infantry yet, but um, this is the F-A-18E, it's a single seater. You'll notice the cockpit is a little smaller than the other one. This is not, is not able to carry the buddy pod um, or the targeting pod, the AT FLIR targeting pod. You'll notice in its place, it's got um, more AIM-120 Bravos. Um, it also has an external fuel tank. The Foxtrot and the Echo can both carry up to five, I believe, external fuel tanks. You don't really need to know too much about that as a JTAC, um, other than if, uh, if an aircraft gives you a long loiter time and not very many munitions, they probably have some external fuel. Um, here we've got the A-10A or A-10 Alpha Thunderbolt II. Um, this guy's got some interesting weapons. You'll notice we have the same AGM-65. This one is actually painted like an AGM-65D. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay. If you can't hear me, stand closer. Um, You've got the AGM-65 over here. This acts exactly the same as the other AGM-65. Um, you got one on each wing here. Um, it actually might be the Golf. Regardless, it's an AGM-65. That's all you need to know. Uh, you've also got forward-facing uh, rockets on this guy. I believe this does not differentiate between the two types of rockets. It's just got the uh, high explosive dual purpose rockets. And then under the belly, you'll see four of those GBU-12 laser guided bombs. Um, same capabilities as before. Um, on the front here, you have the uh, 30 millimeter GAU-8 Avenger cannon with combat mix rounds. What that means is that um, I believe the ratio is four to five for every four armor piercing rounds there are five high explosive rounds or something like that all you need to know is it's a big gun and is good for a variety of targets including light to medium armor infantry vehicles buildings area effect pretty much everything uh, except for heavy heavy armor and uh, extended fortified positions um, Normal combat load on these 1170. Next one is the armor version of the A-10. In this case, it's the A-10D or Delta. Uh, it is a fictionalized A-10. This one's a little bit beefier on the armament. You'll notice you've got um, six AGM-65s. Um, the gun is about the same. This has a differentiating HE versus armor-piercing high-explosive rockets on one side, armor-piercing rockets on the other. It's got two AIM-9s as well, whereas the A model has two AIM-9s on one side and the electronic countermeasures pod on the other. Some of that you don't have to worry about. Just take note of the guns. Any questions on any question on those uh, munitions so far? Next, you'll see two AH-6 Little Birds. Um, Regardless of what mod set you have, one of them is going to have guns. The other one will probably be blank. Um, the difference is basically the Kimmy's helmet mounted displays mod uh, changes some guns. I just put down both versions so that you could see. This has got uh, forward facing aerial rockets, um, which are unguided rocket munitions. Um, don't forget that from this bird, these rockets are unguided. Um, it's also got a really nice Gatling gun or twin Gatling guns again forward-facing um, no aiming capability beyond uh, whatever the uh, beyond the nose of the aircraft 
Um, these are light attack helicopters. They're okay in a lot of situations, especially light infantry escort, uh, recon, things like that. Um, they're not going to be great against heavy armor or anti-air. They have virtually no defensive capabilities. Um, the HMDs mod gives some of them countermeasures like flares, but uh, it's really, it's sort of hit or miss with countermeasures on these guys. Okay, moving on. Um, again, you're going to see two variants over here of the RAH-66 Comanche helicopter. This helicopter was, uh, in real life, developed to be a sort of advanced stealth helicopter. Um, there are a bunch of reasons it didn't go into real service, but we won't get into that. Its weapons capabilities, um, depending on whether you have the Kimi HMD mod, uh, both will have the 20 millimeter XM301 cannon. This cannon is good against um, sort of the same things as the Avenger on the Hog, um, although it's a little more accurate because it's controlled by a gunner in the second seat. This has, um, uh, excuse me, direct attack guided rockets, which are almost the same as the forward facing rockets. They are still controlled by the pilot, I believe. However, um, they do have the capability of IR and laser locking. They are sort of advanced locking system for the rockets. Um, I don't remember how many it carries, but you can see the two rocket pods under there. It's um, 24. Okay, so it's got 24 of these guided rockets. They're a little less, they pack a little less punch than the AGM-65, um, but they are effective against all sorts of things, including groups of infantry. You can designate for them with your laser designator, uh, at least last I checked. Um, uh, it's also depending on whether you've got the HMDs mod. If you have the HMDs mod, this has two AGM-114 Hellfire missiles. If you don't have the mod, this has four, um, sorry, did I say two? I meant four, two on each side. Um, with the mod, it's four Hellfires. Without the mod, it's four AIM-9 uh, Sidewinders, which are the same as the air, anti-air missiles on the other uh, birds over there. Um, so when your aircraft checks in, they'll tell you what they have, and you won't have to remember uh, what which bird has what. Um, and we'll keep moving on here. So that's these two. Uh, I just put two down because some people have the HMDs mod, some people don't, and I didn't know whether you could see both of them, the armaments on both. 